In this lesson, you're going to have a review, de Broglie's hypothesis, matter waves, standing waves, and the wave mechanical model, and much, much more. Hold on to your hats and get ready to take notes because we're setting the stage for the quantum mechanical model. You must know the quantum theory, wave particle duality, the planetary model, and if you don't have these down, you need to go and catch my other videos and make sure you understand wave particle duality. You need to be sure you understand Bohr's model and the quantum theory and understand the photoelectric effect explained by Einstein. The quantum theory states that light is made up of these small particles and these particles uh, that we call photons today are released in discrete amounts. And they're basically little packets of energy, but they're whole amounts of energy. You can't have any fractions. And if you need to get a better explanation of that, then you need to go to my other videos. Wave particle duality. The lower the energy, the more wave-like. And the higher the energy, the more particle light. So when you have these wavelengths like radio waves and microwaves, they're low in energy. And so they have uh, very long wavelengths and behave like waves. But then you have the higher energy like x-rays and ultraviolet light. And this higher energy causes them to act more like particles. And so photons, depending on their energy, have this wave-like or particle-like description. And you need to be sure you understand that. The planetary model states that it's mostly space positive nucleus with negative electrons in these energy levels or orbits. Bohr coming out with the planetary model was trying to explain why those electrons don't spiral into the positive nucleus because that's what Newtonian physics tells us but it doesn't happen so he believed that the energy levels would explain that and an electron starts at a certain energy level and it can jump up to higher excited levels but when it comes back down it comes back to the ground state that it started at and that no electron can go lower than where it started and Bohr used the ideas by Gustav Kirchhoff and Robert Bunsen and their work with line spectra and the line spectra of elements to represent this idea of uh, photons being released at certain levels. So the planetary model, be sure you understand it. But Moore's mistake or what I call uh, Bohr's conundrum, he tried to make classical physics fit the subatomic world and it just wasn't working. What it was time for was a new physics. The rules for the subatomic world were going to be different than the rules for the macro world. Newtonian physics, great for the macro world, great for kinematics, but it did not fit the subatomic world. And so now what we need to do is change things to fit into the subatomic world. Oh, but time out. We had World War I. And World War I kind of stopped things for a while. A lot of the scientists joined the, the war effort and their talents were used for uh, defense and not for what they were doing previously to that. So for a little while, things are on hold. And of course, during this time, uh, we lost Henry Mosley as he was killed in the war. But things would pick up again around 1919 and 1920 and we would see science start up again and especially in this area of physics and chemistry. The events that led up to the wave mechanical model we have matter waves by Louis de Broglie, the standing waves and formulas uh, by uh, Irvin Schrödinger. We had the wave equation taken and used as a model by uh, Max Born. And then we had the uncertainty principle uh, presented by uh, Werner Heisenberg. Well, the first thing we need to look at is de Broglie's hypothesis and the beginning of a new physics. De Broglie is going to take and just state that there's a thing called matter waves and he had no proof of this uh, de broglie just believed that nature is kind of balanced and so the idea was if waves have properties that are like matter or have particle properties then matter which is mostly particle should have wave properties and he pr proposed this just out of the thin air, I guess you could say, because he had no real empirical proof. He did, though, however, develop a mathematical proof, and he proposed that as his doctoral thesis. But, you know, his saying that just because light is mostly wave and has particle properties, and then matter, which is mostly particle, should have wave properties, didn't actually go over with his teachers, and they refused his doctoral thesis, 
And so he took all of his information, he put it together, and he sent it off to Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein wrote back to his professors and told them that this was the brightest young man he had ever seen. His theory or his hypothesis made perfect sense and that they needed to stop and listen to him. Now, isn't that kind of cool? Wouldn't it be cool to have probably one of the smartest men of that time and one of the uh, most popular people in the world at that time come into your defense to say, hey, whoa, no, you need to listen to this young man. This is an awesome idea. And so uh, de Broglie's equation, which was based on Albert Einstein's equation, and there's Einstein's equation, which was based on the speed of light. And de Broglie just assumed that we could take and take the speed of light out and add velocity. And by adding velocity, what we're now saying is that the wavelength is related to the momentum of matter waves. And we have matter wavelengths. And that's really cool. And I hope you watched that example I just had there and notice the connection. Because in reality, the speed of light is the velocity. This here, just replacing the speed of light with velocity and basing it on momentum really does make, make mathematical sense. But he does need to have what? He needs to have empirical proof. But he had no proof. If that turns out to be true, I'll quit physics. And he was referring to de Broglie's hypothesis. And the sad thing about this is, is we're going to see that Clinton and Davison, Clinton Davison and Lester Germer showed that a beam of electrons could be diffracted. Now, what was important about this is that only waves can be diffracted. So if only waves can be diffracted, then electrons must have wave property. But we also know that electrons are matter. They're a very small piece of matter. They have a mass. Even though it's so small, most of the time we ignore it. They do have mass, but it can be diffracted. And what really began people thinking about here now, the real big part of this discovery is the electron is to matter what the photon is to light. Light, which is mostly wave, when high enough in energy, begins to have particle properties. And when it gets that high in energy, it has particle properties, but well, we can even calculate a photon's mass using Einstein. Einstein's equation. Now what we're saying is that an electron, it may be matter, but its mass is so small that it has wave properties. What a discovery. And guess what? Louis de Broglie was correct. Therefore, electrons which are particles must have wave-like properties. What a statement. All right, the wave mechanical model. A new physics develops. Standing waves. Since the electron apparently has wave properties, and we can diffract it, and only waves can be diffracted, remember that, Irvin Schrödinger in 1926 or thereabout proposed that the electron was a 3D waveform. Now, it's 3D because it's mass. It's a piece of matter. Electron's a piece of matter, but it had a waveform, and it was basically a standing wave. And standing waves are... Uh, waves that don't go anywhere. They don't transfer energy and they stay in one area. Now, an example of a type of a standing wave is uh, a wave like when you take a jump rope and you shake the jump rope or possibly on a guitar or on a piano. You have this uh, standing wave. It's a stationary wave and it doesn't transfer energy and it doesn't go anywhere, but it is a wave. Nonetheless, it has a wavelength and amplitude, etc. A standing wave uh, must have an integral number of wavelengths. And if it doesn't, you'll see, just like we see on here, it will collapse on itself. Oops. But over here, integral number of waves, whether n equals 4 or n equals 5, that integral number uh, will allow it to go around. And that fits very much into the idea that the electron and the photons and all these things have to be in discrete amounts. They have to be quantized. Uh, Schrodinger's equation. Well, Schrodinger developed a whole bunch of equations and uh, a philosophy out there called Schrodinger's cat. And if you want to learn a little bit about the arguments and the debates that went on over Schrodinger's equation, then Google Schrodinger's cat and look at some of that information. But I warn you, if you're not really into mathematics, it could give you a headache. So we see Schrodinger's uh, equation here two different forms of it. Uh, these, the form of these equations uh, can also be, if you go to my website, um, mrkazisworld.com slash chemistry, 
you can go and look up Schrodinger's equation through the pages there and see the information that led up to this. Or you can send me an email and I'll send you a copy of my PDF on this. There's a lot of mathics, mathematics involved here. I thought you should at least see what the equation looks like and get a respect for the work that these physicists did in developing uh, quantum mechanics that we know today. The wave mechanical model, therefore, is just a purely mathematical description of the electron's behavior, but there was no empirical evidence. This was completely mathematical. They had no laboratory evidence. They had no proof other than that they knew the electron uh, had wave properties, and they knew that light had particle properties, and there was this wave-particle duality. But exactly how it worked into things uh, wasn't truly clear. But most of the equations only worked for hydrogen. To work for helium and other molecules, we had to make, or other elements, excuse me, we had to make uh, some assumptions. A lot of times in science, assumptions are made. So if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com and check out my website. You can get PowerPoint videos and much, much more. You also go to my YouTube, join my channel, and check out the uh, videos there. All right, everyone. Goodbye and happy ions.